everybody. Um, thank you, Representative Stevenson, for opening up the conference, and congratulations, Sarah and crew, on uh, uh, successful planning and getting this thing off the ground. Crip 3, it's pretty amazing. We started in Gainesville a couple years ago and then had one in the land, so it's uh, pretty exciting that these are still going on. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll get one over to Tampa maybe in a couple of years. Um, so I uh, wanted to talk about the oldest public cemetery in Tampa um, today and a little bit of our work and work with the city of Tampa, the city government. Um, and for a little bit of background before I get started, um, this, I, I guess it all got going in January, January, February. Um, I received an email invitation to head down to uh, uh, downtown Tampa and sit with uh, the mayor's staff and an advocacy group that had uh, kind of risen up, um, and this is kind of a revolving theme with Oakland Cemetery in Tampa and the city of Tampa. Um, an advocacy group that had uh, kind of joined forces and really wanted to put uh, the city's, uh, I guess, feet to the test um, to uh, uh, really put forward, um, you know, their best management skills and practices and establish a good long-term management plan, preservation plan for uh, Oakland Cemetery in Tampa. Um, so sat down and really had no idea what they were looking for, what they wanted to do, but uh, that was, it was pretty clear right, right quickly that that was the case, that they wanted to do this. Um, and the reason was because uh, a few months before that, um, there had been some not so great press uh, in the Tampa Bay Times and the Tampa Tribune um, that the city was uh, not doing their job and preserving the place as well as they could. Um, there's a 1910 shed, historic shed, or Sexton's building um, that's there that's in pretty bad disrepair. Um, and that was, the, that was kind of the catalyst that got it all going. Um, however, as we all know, there's lots of other resources that need to be uh, uh, attended to in historic cemeteries. Um, and so it was a good conversation, a good start. Uh, subsequent meetings were with the Parks Department. Oakland Cemetery is uh, managed currently by the Parks Department for the City of Tampa. And um, just like any good Parks Department, they manage it like a park. Um, and, uh, and sometimes that's successful and sometimes not so successful. And so um, that's where we got started. And really, um, you know, I, I titled this um, Creating Long-Term Management Plan. And, and it may be a little misleading that we are the ones that are creating it, but it's the advocacy group, it's the city of Tampa, it's the other uh, uh, stakeholders like the Tampa Historical Society, Shelby Bender, um, lots of folks in and around Tampa have had a role um, in the past with you know, doing some of the sort of things that, that will ensure long-term preservation out there. And um, um, I think this is maybe the most recent attempt uh, to get the city to really put some funds and some resources towards it and hopefully we can, in the end of this, really create a good long-term management plan. So, um, this is a work in progress and I think you'll get the gist of that as I go roll through these slides, um, but it's a work in progress and it's a learning, it's a learning process for me, um, uh, working on a preservation plan, a long-term management plan with the city and uh, really figuring out everything that kind of needs to go into it. So. Um, why don't we uh, talk a little bit about the cemetery. Uh, Oakland Cemetery is the oldest public cemetery in Tampa. It was established in 1850. Um, uh, the oldest public burying ground. Uh, it's a, a really beautiful place in the midst of a crazy urban environment where there's a bus station right next door. Um, there's all sorts of buildings going up. Buildings getting flattened. There used to be a jail just to the north of it. Um, that's no longer there. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty mixed up, crazy location. Um, this is an 1853 map of Tampa, and uh, in 1853 there was maybe five, six, 500, 600 residents in the city at that time, and they were just really getting developed. Fort Brook had been established at the south end of that Inner Bay Peninsula in 1824, um, and uh, uh, after that the city started to expand a little bit northward outside of the boundaries of, of historic work not historic at that time, but outside the boundaries of Fort Brook. And you can see um, they put they put Oakland Cemetery about a half mile away from kind of modern day downtown, but a good ways out of kind of the central part of the city at that time. Um, there wasn't a whole bunch of development, so 
even though this is, you know, considered the public burying ground, it's a good, a good ways away from where everybody and kind of the activity was centered here along the Hillsborough River and kind of down closer towards Fort Brook. This is just a, a little blown up version of the same map. The burying ground is literally right there as far north east as you can get in this map. So um, today uh, she sits kind of, you know, obviously in the same place, a little bit away from uh, the modern hustle and bustle, but there's still a lot of activity around. So 1853, this is a map overlaid with the modern parcel boundaries. The original burying ground for Oak Lawn is this section right here, um, and that was established in 1850. In 1874, St. Louis Catholic Cemetery was established just to the north and abutted um, Oak Lawn Cemetery. Early on in the 1850s, um, the cemetery plots were pretty much bought up really quickly. Um, and so there wasn't a lot of space. By 1880, uh, one of the uh, uh, notorious judges in town, Judge Magby, uh, owned the property to the east of Oak Lawn and decided to uh, uh, hand that over, I guess sold it probably for a, a, a small fee, uh, but expanded the cemetery, cemetery here. So 1850, the original expansion, 1880 of the public burying ground, and then the St. Louis Catholic Cemetery, which abuts it there. Um, to the north. And so that's how it, it, the cemetery kind of sits today um, with these uh, more or less kind of three sections and then a nice parking lot just to the northeast of it. So here it is in, in kind of a modern scope. You can see there's just a lot of activity. And one of the reasons that I wanted to point this out is, you know, it's, it's important to think about these preservation plans and these management plans as, as these historic cemeteries, and especially the case for Oak Lawn in the city of Tampa. Um, this is the connection to the historic landscape of what maybe that Jackson map in 1853, all these plots, all these lots, these city blocks might have looked like. Um, and you can see just about, you know, everything's been torn down except for that one place. So it's, it's that was really eye-opening for the city officials. Um, I think they knew that. They recognized this as a city park, one of the oldest parks. Um, but seeing it, you know, from this perspective and from, from the perspective of preservation, um, I think it really started to kind of build on itself. So, with that said, um, what's a management plan? What's a preservation plan? These were the questions that started to come up, not only in the meeting with the, the mayor's staff and the advocacy group, um, but also, you know, especially with the parks department. What are the things that they need to begin doing, or what are the things that they already provide that might not be the best management practices? And uh, um, at this particular time, all of a sudden, um, it came up, uh, you know, that Manatee County, and Faith Carter sitting here in the, in the front row, um, is also working on a management plan, a preservation plan for the old burying grounds in Bradenton, Manatee County. Um, so all these questions, you know, just started to kind of like steamroll into my email inbox and, and all over the place. Um, so it was good to get an idea of, of uh, the details of what's involved in a preservation plan and a management plan and started looking around to lots of other resources um, that are available, management plans and preservation plans online, um, but then also looking at some of the resources that we provide in the CRIP handout and um, other you know, associated resources like that. So the big question was like, well, why do we need a preservation plan? Why do we need a management plan? And I didn't have the greatest answers for them at that first initial meeting, and maybe I should have, but this is a work in progress, and they understood that, and so they were willing to kind of let me come back and, and talk about it a little bit more. And, uh, and one of the, the things that I really see drew a light bulb in um, parks employees and city officials' minds was that this is the first public park, more or less, for the city of Tampa. Um, and it is that connection to the remaining historic landscape. Here's Oak Lawn with its beautiful oak trees, lots of cedar trees, all kinds of really great resources in that small little city block and then right here is the bus station and a new apartment building and a great historic church and then lots of flat parking lots and all kinds of major roadways and all sorts of stuff all the way around it. You walk into Oak Lawn and it is a nice respite and they recognize that and they see that. So what are the things that they can do that they can continue to do to help to preserve and ensure the, the longevity of this, this really great place? And not all cemeteries are the same, and some have complex issues that we really need to discuss, just like what Representative Stevenson had mentioned 
as far as St. Sebastian. Um, there's lots of things going on in cemeteries, uh, not just with the resources, but with all the stakeholder groups and everybody that has, you know, some sort of, of uh, I guess, leaning or holding in the cemetery, and especially the relatives and the descendants of the people that are buried there. Um, and some of the public meetings that we held out at Oaklawn, uh, the, the press days, you know, people were coming as, from as far away as an hour, hour and a half away just to kind of see what was going on at Oaklawn and tell us the story about how they tra traced, you know, their relatives and their, the people that were buried there and some of the early settlers in Tampa who um, are fixed with their family and, and how they traced them there. And so it's really heartfelt stories and connections and, and really great things like that. So, um, what's in a successful preservation plan? I think you guys may be aware of this, but um, these are the, the steps that we took in the conversations that we've had with the city and with the Parks Department, is that we've got to establish a clear mission and program, um, have an excellent understanding of the history of the place, um, provide accurate mapping, get a good map, know what the boundaries are, know where the resources are located, um, figure out some assessments. What do we have out there? What kind of state is it in? Um, and where do we go from there? And then phase in those recommendations and create the maintenance and the management plans. And so all of these components, what I learned is they don't have to happen at once. So it was a good like, sigh of relief for me. I don't have to figure all this out um, all at one time. But we can work on a few of these, build that into a long-term preservation or management um, for the city. And so they were willing to give us uh, the time to reach out to uh, uh, different advocacy groups, um, the genealogical societies. I know the uh, director of the Tampa Library is very involved in the genealogical society, and so they want to play a role. And there's been so much work that has been conducted already at Oaklawn that this is kind of a, an easy place to start from. Shelby wrote a book about it, Tampa's Historic Cemeteries. Um, so we've got a really great place to kind of start. And in 2011, um, Oakland Cemetery was included as a local historic landmark within the city of Tampa. And so we've got this great landmark nomination um, where a lot of the histories was put together. And Shelby might be able to help me. The individual's name did so much of the research out there. He's buried there now. I know, I have forgotten to. Julius Gordon. Julius Gordon, thank you. Um, really did a lot of work and put a lot of this information together. And so over the years, um, there's been a great effort to, to tackle all of these things that will go into a preservation plan. And I think where we're at is just kind of pull them all, pulling them all together and, and creating this document or creating this plan. Um, and, yeah? Can I tell you this before I forget? Go ahead. You know, he worked with John Baxter and they were doing all Oh, that's great. Great. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Gordon's um, burial place is right there, close to the Ashley Field. Right? Um, so what we were able to do was go ahead and get an accurate map. Um, the city and the Parks Department had been working on, um, and I'll keep, kind of keep this, get it going. Uh, the city and the Parks Department have been working on a really old map, and they needed something that uh, was a, a fresh map and a good, accurate kind of location of all the resources and the boundaries and everything. So we started working on that really, really quickly, um, going around with a hand-drawn map, but then also taking uh, some GPS points of each individual resources so we can, re when we're done um, kind of analyzing and pulling in all that data, we can take this map and geotag each one of those locations and, and build in the assessment reports uh, for each of the headstones and the resources um, and uh, um, get some photographs and all that sort of stuff and then ultimately get this online so it's available for everybody to see through the City of Tampa's website. So we hired some professional consultants to come out <laughs> and do the uh, ground penetrating radar for us. Um, they were great, uh, brought their own sippy cups and everything. Um, but uh, this was one of the, the important pieces and important aspects that we brought to the city because um, even it's so easy even a mayor could do it. That's <laughs> um, this is Mayor Buckhorn who came out and played with the GPR while we were conducting the work um, and he's like a throwback Irish got, uh, politician, you know, had all the Irish politician jokes. That's pretty funny. Um, but in Oakland we recognize that there's 
some uh, empty areas or some areas that, that are without or devoid of, of headstones. And uh, we figured that because it had really been you know, utilized pretty quickly and there's lots and lots of burials out there, um, that there you know, would be the case that there's some unmarked graves. And so these are the areas that we focused on to do the ground penetrating radar and gradiometer study um, and, and have analyzed that data. Originally, the plan for the cemetery um, was that this particular section was utilized and the northeast section was utilized for African Americans or slaves at that time. Um, and from the historical records, it was noted that a lot of them were buried with wooden headstones, um, wooden markers, or even some not at all. There's a couple of mass graves from yellow fever epidemics out there. Um, so there was some issues that the city needed to be aware of if they wanted to go in and redo water, redo electricity, that sort of stuff. And so that's one of the reasons why um, this assessment needed to be conducted. And so some of the preliminary data that we've got, we're able to pick out some, some patterns, um, especially in this particular, these two sections, um, where we've got some anomalies that just really kind of line up and make a nice line, especially when you put a nice dash line to them. Um, they make a nice line. But that was the preliminary. We conducted more um, analysis of the data and it really does show up, you know, really pretty clearly that we've got a lot of unmarked resources that are out there, especially in the areas that we serve in. Um, so a successful preservation plan for Oaklawn and St. Louis. Um, it, it combines all of these sorts of things. Uh, and we're working on, we've got a good understanding of the history. Um, there's been so much work that's done out there. We're working on the mapping and the, the assessments. Uh, park staff has done a really great job uh, over the years. We've conducted two cemetery trainings out at Oaklawn, three cemetery trainings out at Oaklawn and St. Louis Catholic Cemetery, and uh, they've put uh, together a handwritten hard copy kind of document of all of the gravestones, especially the ones that are um, in need of repair and are damaged. Um, and so we're going to build that into this database, this geo database. Um, and then start to work with them on phasing in recommendations for what, what needs to get done and what may take priority. Um, and they already, the city, the Parks Department already has a really good idea of, of what that will be. Um, but maintenance plans like lawn and plant care and seasonal work and resetting headstones and trash removal and those sorts of things need to be, need to be identified and detailed um, so that there's really a good plan for the Parks Department to work on. And then the cemetery management plan really involves all of these sorts of things that, that, are, that are entailed in, in daily administration duties and tasks. Um, and we're fortunate with Oaklawn because there's been a lot of attention paid to this. And it's gone through these kind of ups and downs of attention and inattention. And I think we're at a good point right now um, with so much work that has been conducted. And so there's lots of, of uh, walking tours that are established, the Tampa Historical Society. Um, conducts them, but they're also available online, so we've got a really good place to start. Um, and uh, I don't want to go too far over my points, but that's really where we're at, so it's a work in progress, and thank you guys for having me, and thanks for listening this morning.